Hello everybody. Here is my swatch color cookbook video of the Kuretake Gansai Tambi 36 color set. Um, here's a painting that I did, just a quick mirror, um, mandala painting that I did um, using a selective color set that I picked out of the 36 colors. Teals, blues, and oranges, and then a little bit of purple. And then of course I wanted to test out that lovely silver so I used that and I'm tilting it here to show you the shine on this if you want to see this video I'll link it uh, to me painting it I haven't put up the video yet but I just wanted to show you an example of the use of these um, paints So let's begin. Here's my set. Um, as I mentioned in another video I did, what I really love about these is you can pull out the colors, uh, the little pans, and so you don't feel forced to use the whole color set. And you can put the, you can pull out the pans like this, choose a, a color palette for your painting, and then put the whole set away so you're, you're not tempted to use them all. Um, I also love the size of these. They're nice and big so it fits in a big brush, a big wide one, one and a half incher, um, which is really good. On the bottom there it has the name um, so you can put them back in their proper slot. These paints differ somewhat from the normal uh, traditional watercolors that are translucent and, and don't uh, normally use white. They, um, they're they more on the opaque side. They're sort of in between uh, a watercolor and a gouache. Um, so if you like painting with acrylics or gouache, you will really like these paints. So I'm gonna swatch in my color cookbook here. Um, just finding a page. Uh, I'm gonna choose a page with um, you know double sides because I want nice big juicy swatches and so that you can see them as well. And the brushes that I'm using are from Jackson's uh, in the UK. They're squirrel hair brushes size 6 and a size 10. I'm going to use probably the size 6 mostly for this. I just have a roll of toilet paper here that I use to tap the excess paint and brushes and a small jar of water. Here's my porcelain palette. It's actually a food plate with three sections, but I just take out uh, I just took out one section, but I can use one to three of these sections for my mixing. Here are my paint brushes, size 6 and 10, and these brushes are lovely. I'll provide a link if you'd like to get some for yourself. So the first thing I noticed were the very similar reds and oranges. You're given four reds and I'd say three oranges, and two of the darker oranges look very similar to two of the reds. I'd say there's like three orangey reds and two cool sort of magenta reds and then one red that's sort of bordering on a fuchsia pink. I find that the top four, row of four, are more on the cool side of the reds, and then the second line, number 30, 31, and 33, are more on the warmer side of reds, and then 33 is of course the orange. But 32, 35, 34, and 36 are all very similar colors, very sort of cool to neutral reds. Um, number 43 and 42 are also very similar. Um, and I can tell that these aren't top 
the, these are really good quality paints, but they're not, um, I mean, you could, artists and crafters could have fun with these because they are good quality, um, but tr in traditional watercolors, you, it's kind of known that you don't rely on white to lighten up your color, and it seems like Kuretake has put a lot of white pigment in, you know, a couple of the greens and the blue 61, um, in the green number 50, and then the yellow, mustard yellow number 44, and the number 42 particularly, uh, or the number 43, look like they have a bit of white in them. Same with brown number 46. Um, instead of just being the translucent pigment. So I did contact the company and I was concerned about the light fastness of the paint and the answer that came back was they were very top quality and that they were very light fast. I was looking for a little bit more of a technical explanation as to where they got their pigments, where they sourced them, um, and as the quality and there's a light fastness rating in that the states developed and um, they the representative didn't seem to have an answer on what the light fast rating was um, because I think it's a United States thing but other companies in the UK such as Windsor Newton other companies seem to be able to tell the light fastness rating of their products so for I can see why crafters are excited about these because it seems like these are a step into what quality artist quality paints feel like. They're very pigmented, they're beautiful to use just because they're so pigmented and um, a few of them are pretty luminous. Um, but the other ones seem to rely on white to bring an opaqueness, but the thing is uh, anime artists do use um, a lot of these. The what the I noticed that they use the blue with the white in it a lot. It's just a style. It's not right or wrong, um, and so you can just you know depending on your style, you can choose whether to use them. I would recommend getting them just because um, if you want to make a quickie card they're good. You probably don't have to worry about your painting like my mandala there uh, fading because they are, they have told me that they are light fast, very light fast they said, so that's good. Um, of course the white, the silver, the gold, and the rose gold are so much fun to use. They, I can tell you that they are better than the um, twinkling H2O's I will try to put in a picture here comparing my color swatches of the Twinkling H2O's versus these sparkly paints and these ones blow them away in terms of sparkliness so they are really beautiful. So here are the Twinkling H2O's Here are swatches of the Kuretake sparkly paints. And just for reference, here is a swatch of the Windsor & Newton silver ink, which is super metallic. As for artists, whether you should replace your artist quality watercolors with these? Absolutely not. Um, your artist color uh, paints are luminous and they have, you, you should have the colors such as raw sienna, burnt sienna, and all the traditional colors. Um, I recommend any artist or crafter get those shades anyway. Um, but to if you love art products and art supplies and you're an artist, I say go out and get these. Um, you know what? If art's your thing, then I don't have a problem with trying out as many art supplies as you want. If it helps you be creative and it help, if it helps you um, make a painting and be inspired and 
helps you in the way of picking colors, like taking these trays out and picking a color scheme, which it totally helped me. In that mandala, I'll show you, I picked out just teals and a couple of oranges and a silver and a blue. And it just, if it psychologically helps you um, limit your color palette, then it helps you in any way, then go get the product. That's what I say. And that's what I love about these. The big pans, you can fit a nice big brush in, especially if you have higher quality brushes like these brushes I'm showing you, uh, these squirrel hair brushes or my Escoda brushes that are made in Spain. Um, you don't want to be smushing a brush, a good quality brush around in circles in a tiny little well. It, it can ruin them, it can damage them. I'm not saying it will, but it can. And these nice big pans are just beautiful for putting a nice uh, big brush in there and getting some juicy puddles of color. Again, I noticed um, with these greens, they are very similar. It's just really strange how they um, how they pick their shades because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight greens. And I would pick out two immediately that are, I'd say three, that are distinguishing colors. Number 50, number 54 is a very dark olive, number 50 is a very bright emerald, and 57 is bordering on going into the teal. But the other ones, 51, 53, 52, 58, 55, and 56 are so similar, it's just odd. They're different. I mean, I can tell that 55 and 56 are more on the cool side. And 58 and 52 are sort of neutral. 53 and 51 are more on the warm side, yellowish green. And 54 as well, more on the olive side. Um, but it's just funny how they pick their... Uh, they probably go by anime artists and... You know, that's their control group that they speak to, I don't know.
So the blues, you get about six blues and one of them is very, has the opaque white in it, number 61. Um, I'd say the truest blue would be number 64 and it's sort of like a bright basic blue. Number 63 is going towards the green, 62 is a dark sort of London blue color, it's beautiful. And 66 and 67 are sort of on the ultramarine side and 67 is a nice dark grey stormy sky blue. Number 66 is sort of ultramarine, um, and 67 is a nice dark stormy sky navy blue. Then we have the purples, number 38 and 139, and there's only two, but I mixed my own purple, you'll see it coming up at the end, and I made a nice reddish purple, so they do mix very nicely. Number 37 and 46 are very unique, sort of odd colors. 37 is uh, like a dark fuchsia. And number 46 I think is their stab at a raw sienna or a burnt sienna. But you really need, I mean, it looks like they just have mixed a brownish orange and there's some white in there and I don't, I don't know, it doesn't impress me very much. So I would really consider, if you're serious about art, you need a burnt sienna and a raw sienna, and you need those basics. And then 47 is a really nice earthy brown color. I like, I prefer that cool brown color myself. Um, and then 20, you have black.
Okay, here we have the white color number 10. I'm just laying it down after I've done all my swatches and I'm putting in some um, some lighter luminous colors in with this white to give a representation of what happens. Um, so it's they're mixing nicely. It's just making a creamy sort of more opaque green color here. And then I go and put in um, a, sort of a neutral red. I think it's number 35 I'm putting in there. 32 or 35. And what I can see this, this useful for is making skin tones. I'm putting in some orange. And I know that if I were to make skin tone, I would be using a bit of that white, some orange, and some red. Possibly a bit of yellow, possibly a teeny bit of purple for some coolness for the shadows of the face. But um, as you can see here, this is what it looks like to mix the colors with that opaque white with a wet and wet wash. And here I'm going in with some blue. I think this color I'm using is 64. It's either 64 or 63. And the colors mix very well. As you can see, uh, here it's creating sort of like a tie-dye look, which is really interesting. Uh, my favorite way of, the thing that I love about watercolor, the thing that I adore is wet in wet washes. I just love it. So here's the first wash of white, and then I like dropping in color, and I love the lack of control when the paint just goes where it wants and it makes blooms. Um, I think a lot of people or beginners make mistakes in that they overwork it and they they see it doing the bloom and then they go in with their paintbrush and then they smear it all around and I'm like, oh no, there goes the bloom, it's so lovely, you know, it did it by itself and I just, I love when ink does that too. So when that those colors there dry in with the opaque white it, it's really neat it, it ends up looking like a, a tie-dye effect so I could see someone making a card with that look um, here I'm going in with the silver you can't see it very well here but I'm going to insert a picture where I kind of tilt the camera so you can see the shine of these paints and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video the comparison between the twinkling H2O's, if you're thinking, hmm, I have twinkling H2O's, I don't need the Kuretake paints, um, the Kuretake paints blow away the twinkling H2O, H2O's in sparkliness. I'm just saying it's, it's not even a comparison. Um, these are much more bold. I mean, of course, you want a subtler look sometimes. You could use the twinkling HUOs. And I and I'm I don't know about the quality of those either as for light fastness. I would trust these more for a painting for archi archival um value. I would trust these more absolutely. Uh so here's the rose gold and it's just of course, that's my favorite. Just uh beautiful and the first layer is a more opaque, you can sort of see streakiness, but as you see, I, as I put the second layer on, it's, uh, it's really, really metallic looking. Um, I might put in a comparison to, for Winsor & Newton um, ink. Um, I have a silver one, which I did swatches of as well, and that is, that's the most metallic paint I would say it looks like actual silver and these ones are sort of next down the line then the twinkling H2O's are sort of at the bottom I'm going in here with some luminous green color which is um, I think it's number 51 I'm using and it's just a lovely grass green very luminous and what I'm gonna do here is mix the silver right on the page, not in my palette. I'm mixing the silver 
on the page and it's very interesting how the silver paint reacts with um, with the other color pigment it sort of pushes it out of the way in bloom fashion it's almost like there's real metallic in there and it's sort of pushing it away if you've ever used Pebeo moon paints it it's doing that sort of pushing action and I'm, I'm just mixing the two together here um, right on the right on the palette or right on the page sorry so you can see and the other thing is it's really annoying how I mean I'm mixing them together but I'm getting that green paint in my silver um, palette like I'm contaminating the silver um, pan so I mean you have to go and clean that out so you don't have the color um, contaminating your pan so it's probably better to mix it with a clean brush in your palette if you want and I do that here with uh, see here I'm getting out the green just cleaning it up just putting some water in there and dumping out the silver paint and I'm gonna mix um, some blue I'm gonna mix a blue silver here to show you and if you don't have a, a a porcelain palette to mix your watercolors on I highly recommend it it's just way better than plastic plastic beads up so you can't have a nice even pool of color but with porcelain you get um, a nice big accurate view of what color you're mixing So here I'm just sort of dumping water on the pan and trying to get a nice juicy flow going out of it and dumping it on there. Because as soon as I put my silver colored brush back on that blue, it just makes all the silver particles come out onto the blue pan and I have to wash it all off to, to not contaminate the pan. See there you can see the blue on the silver pan. <laughs> kind of a pain but here you can see the blooms happening very well I zoomed up um, and you can see how the the metal reacts in the blue pigment which is really interesting in fact you could make a painting just sort of dropping um, droplets of the silver into pools of the blue and leave it maybe take out your heat tool and uh, and just let them bloom like that and it would make a very interesting background so as you can see you can make you can make any color in the palette be metallic on the silver side or on the gold warm side so here's an example I'm just painting out that blue metallic that I made as opposed to the green metallic that I made where I mixed it on the paper and here's just a, a close-up of how the paint reacts with the pigment color the other annoying thing is I'm showing my my water there the you kind of have to it's a delicate process to mix these metallics because the metallic gets all inside your um, glass water and then you can't go and take another color and continue painting if you don't want that metallic mixed in with it because it, inf it infests everywhere like you can't you have to sort of be careful using it so um, you could overdose on glitter is what I'm saying <laughs> you have to kind of be careful because even as here I'm mixing a purple I'm taking out a blue and a um, a red to see how these paints mix and look at that gorgeous color it made uh, a nice eggplant aubergine color but you see that splotch of silver there blooming out into that that purple that I just made um, 
it's just taking it over and that's what the metallic uh, pigment the the particles do they bloom out it's 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 really neat I'm sure I'll be making a painting a background with that sort of look because it's I mean I love the alchemy of it all And then here I'm just um, mixing the two sort of more opaque, the colors I can tell that they've mixed white in, number 50 green and number 61 blue. I'm just mixing those together to see what happens. So I hope you enjoyed my color swatching video. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you care to. Thank you very much.